thank you all for tuning in. Um, we are going to cover uh, a new list of bangers tonight. Um, the one common thread of the books we could talk about tonight, are there no variants allowed? So this entire uh, list are books that we consider to be modern bangers, um, but they're all cover A's um, or open orders. So uh, let's get into it. All right. So this book is uh, not a mystery to anybody who's collecting modern comics. Ultimate Fallout number four um, by Mark Bagley. This is the cover A. Um, there are 10,000 on the census. When we pull this list together, uh, the high sale that we saw was about $2,700. Uh, it, it went north of that, and I think it's actually settled back down to this 2700 range currently. But uh, hard to argue that this book isn't um, a modern must-have. Anybody have any thoughts on it? What, were, what, what, what was the spec on it, Ben? The spec? The yeah, spec? so uh, <laughs> there's this character in this book called uh, Miles Morales who uh, who could have a future in the in, 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 in the in both the comics and the movies. We'll see. We'll see. And, and that's the guy on the cover, Miles. Uh, yeah, you can't see his face, but oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm about to add one more to the synthesis, so I'm excited about that. I'll probably be getting it back sometime this week. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah, this book is the sort of the the A of fifteen of of modern comics, right? It, it is an absolute must have. Uh, it'll ebb and flow, but Miles will come in some serious waves. And if you're collecting modern comics, you kind of have to have this one in your collection. All right, next NYX number three. Uh, the first appearance of um, Wolverine's daughter. Uh, her, um, you know, the last show we saw on this one was almost 2,000 uh, back in late March. Uh, there's just over 5,000 on the census. Uh, this book has gotten hot. It's gotten cold. But it's hard to argue that it isn't a modern um, uh, must-have comic. Um, what I'll say is that this cover gets a lot of slack in that it's not that good. I'm going to go the other way. I think this cover is absolutely brilliant. Like, simply brilliant, and uh, I love it. Um, a beautiful, beautiful book. Yeah, Joshua uh, Middleton, is, he does some amazing covers. Uh, this this book um, and this whole, actually the whole miniseries was amazing. It's probably one of the best uh, modern um, series that I read. Um but yeah, try finding one <laughs> in high grade and spending that much money because I don't think it's ever going to go. I don't think it's going to drop um, anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, it, this book should hold steady. You're right, Samson. Uh, Middleton. Some of the covers on this on this series were just absolutely brilliant. God, First thing, number one is my favorite. Um, you know, the reason I started buying this book uh, when it first came out was because I saw that first cover. And I'm like, wow, this this is really stunning. Yeah, so, um, yeah I mean, the, the, this the, this book is, you know, I think only poised to to grow over time. Yeah, the whole. I mean, actually, all the covers are are bangers. <laughs> um, and uh, if they ever were ever to do an ad adaptation on on this series, oh man, it'll take the MC to a whole new level. Yeah, it's a little edgy. I'm not sure they'd go there. I mean, yeah, who knows? we'll see. But yeah, you're right. It, it would take it to a new level. Yeah, and it, it makes me wonder if they're trying to wait until like maybe that actress uh, gets a bit older um, for, to to uh, create a series or put her in a movie. Or you know, or just choose someone else, but we never know. Yeah, I mean that, that, that that's a tough one. Um, a tough one, Aaron. I'm not sure which way they go with that one. Whether they, yeah, they, she was really good in Logan, um, but whether she makes sense going forward, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. I guess. All right, man. This is a book I wish I had. Uh, Adam, Legend of the Blue Marble, number one. Uh, first appearance of um, 
the Blue Marvel. Uh, this book goes for the last time we saw it for two thousand and nine eight. I think you'd be lucky to find it anywhere near that price right now. Um, not a lot of copies on the census, just over six hundred. Um, this book only had about fifteen thousand or copies ordered, so uh, really, really, really tough to come by. Uh, this is a character that is is almost like a Moon Knight type character, but not even that prevalent. Um, there, there's just some um, allure to this character that people just absolutely need to have, and um, you know he doesn't show up that much in the comics. Hasn't shown up anywhere. Obviously, in movies at this point, which is not to say that he's not coming, um, but about a book that people pay a big, big premium for, and frankly, one I wish I had. See, a while back, they a couple of years ago, they had speculated, or uh, there was a rumor that Denzel was going to uh, play Adam, the uh, the Blue Marvel, and when when that leaked out, this book started started moving. Um, I had six copies of this book, but they weren't nine eight candidates, so I I flipped them. You know, I I, I wish I would have kept one, but I mean, it's I you know it's going to be a while before we see this character. I I mean I'd be shocked in the next two years if he popped out. You know, it's just who knows? Maybe with the Fantastic Four coming, and you know. I could see that, but it, I mean, man, we, we still got a long way to go. Yeah, I would agree, Joe. Like, I, I love the character, love the theme, love the book. It's hard to see how, if that's what you're specking on, how this character pops up. Yeah. In the I, I do believe, like you do, he'll show up eventually, but in the near term, it's a tougher one to kind of connect the dots on. All right. Uh, so, you know, this book actually had a very similar print run to the book we just talked about, Adam Marvel. I think this book was probably in the 16,000 range, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is the first appearance of Amadeus Cho. Um, you know, this book goes for 1600 um, in 9.8, but I don't think you'd have any chance of getting it, frankly, currently at that price in 9.8. Uh, there's just over 700 on the census and uh, a really, really difficult book. I will say this book also has a newsstand, a newsstand variant um, that is almost impossible to find, um, but a cool cover nonetheless. I will point out, because a lot of people don't realize this, but that's Amadeus Cho in the background with the peace sign on the screen yeah. back there. So some people didn't think he made a cover appearance here. That's him. And that was confirmed by the artist. Man, I remember when I was getting back into comics, um, my brother was also at the same time. And he was like, man, you need to hop on this book. And this is about the time period when they were selling for $20 raw. And I was like, uh, maybe. And then, but basically uh, he bought one and then, you know, he graded it and all that. And then he was right. I mean, he must be a better speculator than me or something. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think the tricky thing about this book is, you know, people have talked about it for years, right? But I don't think people appreciated how scarce it was for a cover A. And there's no variance other than the new stand. Like, this is it. But so 16,000, right? Th that's not a lot um, for, for an important character if that's the only book you're specking on. And uh, so, yeah, it disappeared pretty quickly, but a uh, really cool cover. You know, the irony is, is that it's AF15 Volume 2, right? We already have an AF15 that's important. Um, but, uh, and, the, and it has an homage, obviously, to that, the original. But, uh, yeah, a super cool book and, and one that's only likely to grow. I think there's a lot of speculation that Cho shows up in She-Hulk, right? Yeah. There's a lot of talk about that. Well, I've I've heard a lot, a lot of rumors like uh, of an appearance of of Amadeus Cho on on She Hulk. Yeah, you so, know. So I mean, I'm I'm it's strange. Uh, I don't, I forgot her name uh, from uh, Beyond the Trailer, and she always reviews uh, movies and things like that. 
she even brought that up, you know, and she's pretty close to, uh, she's pretty close to a lot of the, the rumors and she gets, she gets some, uh, some inside intel. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, why in the heck would she bring up Amadeus Joe? You know, um, God, I forgot her name, uh, but she reviews, uh, it's a blonde lady. She reviews all the movie trailers. Yeah. Somebody. It's worth reminding the viewers that, you know, Cho's mother showed up in Age of Ultron. Right? Mm -hmm. She was in that movie. So, you know, there, the, the seeds have been planted for sure. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But, but a cool book for sure. Yeah. All right. So this is a book that shouldn't be a mystery to anybody who collects modern comic books. Uh, Edge of Spider-Verse number two. First appearance of Spider-Gwen. Um, you know, this, this is a $2,000 book in 9.8 currently, uh, just over 5,000 on the census, which is a pretty big number. Um, but a book that's only likely to grow over time. The spec on whether or not this character shows up in the movies is difficult given sort of how Sony and Marvel's relationships are. But, um, but she's definitely going to be in the new Edge of Spy, uh, uh, into the Spider-Verse uh, animated movie coming up next year. And uh, a super cool character and uh, a fan favorite, frankly, for, for, for most people. Yeah, one of my favorite characters to, you know, to come out of that, uh, that miniseries. So I'm definitely looking forward to the Into the Spider-Verse, uh, see if she like reappears, which it'd be really disappointing if she didn't. Uh, she will, she will. And I'll say this, if that movie had come out in 2020, you know, <laughs> the the fervor around this book would be crazy, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, you know, Haley Steinfeld, uh, who's going to be Kate Bishop, ironically, she did a really good job with that character. But I think the buzz would just be even huger given sort of where comics are right now. Um, and we'll see what happens uh, in, in part two. Uh, if, if this turbocharges this book or not, but it's a must-have book in your collection, I think, for for modern comics. Well, if if they build on on the romance of Miles and 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 Gwen, if they build on that, then you you got to think it's going to add more heat to this book. I mean, just develop that that love story. Yeah, I mean, this I mean, book had a, this book had about, if I recall, and anybody else correct me if I'm wrong, had about fifty to fifty-five thousand copies ordered. Which is not huge by comic standards. Um, it's it's a lot, but it's not it's not egregious by any means. So, um, yeah, this book should be in demand for a long, long time. I think. You know, and the timing of when this book came out, I, I remember it came out close to the winter time, right? Like November, December, somewhere around there. Yeah, when, I think that's right, Joe. I think yeah, right. in two thousand. 15, 16, what, what year did this come out? 2014. Was, 24, wow. Okay, so 2014. 14 or 15, yeah. So I don't know if they even thought that this book was going to be a hit because typically books that they think they're going to be a hit come out right in the summertime, you know? Oh, so no, they, they didn't think this was going to be a hit at all. This was just a passing thing. And the character yeah. hit so hard, like right out of the gate, that they, they ran with it, right? I, they were not expecting at all the success from this character that they got that 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 much is clear yeah um and i think they've admitted it right um um but yeah i mean and she's not going away i mean you know ghost spider spider gwen whatever you want to call her super important character of marvel going forward so uh this this book is only likely to sort of stay hot for for a long time yeah, yeah, I think if uh, if there was a timeline in a comic museum and it and you had to pinpoint the book that made new comic book spec, this would this in my opinion would be it because when this book came out, it was like sixty to eighty bucks on eBay instantly. Yeah, and out then of the gate, right, man, like out of the gate. Yeah, and madness and. Also, there's also an, an era of this book where the background is more darker and blends in with the buildings, yeah. which goes for a yeah. premium. I think that's annotated by CGC as well. But uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a big premium too, Phil. I mean, that's yeah, not, super, that's super hard to find. Yeah, um, I want to say CBCS 
also says it exists. Like the there's a lighter background and a darker, but they don't say if you have that on the actual book. They I, say I would, they exist. I would yeah, say it. if you if you're looking for that cover, I would be very careful because people do some uh, shitty stuff with uh, their their cameras and and make the background look darker. And but won't say that it's a darker cover, but you'll think it's darker. Yeah, this is the one you're talking about, isn't it? It's like a burgundy, right? A darker, isn't it? Like a, or is no, it it's, it's a black, all black. Uh, yeah, okay, it's a black. And I think I in the in, in the background, yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, cool. It, 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 it's right, it's more like her dress and the top, yeah, in the background. So, um, yeah, it's they're, they're tougher to find, and it's and it's. The shades vary, right? It's like yeah. the printer ran out of ink or something, or over inked or whatever it was. But um, that's cool. I, I just want to pipe in. Hey, thanks for letting me join late. Sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> welcome, guys, Anthony. Um, I, I, but yeah, no, I love this book. I gotta say, don't you think that looks a little bit like Emma Stone? <laughs> a little bit. I'm, just, a little. I'm just throwing it out there man and, can you imagine you know, dude speculation yeah. is speculation but how many crazy you know iterations of of characters are we getting in this next live action spider-man movie that, that we're aware of jesus that christ we we Tony. Aware of. emma stone is cast you know she's already been gwen yeah she died but you know we're we're dealing with the multiverse here. It would be so cool to just see her, you know, pull that hood back. And, Man, and if she does that, this screen. book will go nuclear, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. nuclear like, on another level, dude. I got goosebumps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. All right, so this this book is uh, it's a tough book. Um, Vengeance number one. This is Del Otto. Uh, there's a cover A. There is a one in 15, which we've talked about on other banger shows. Uh, but this book, in and of itself, is really, really tough. You know, we put these slides together a little while ago. So the high sale here is 1400. But but we know for a fact that we've seen a high sale 98 of over 2000. And uh, uh, there's about 800 on the census. Copies ordered of this book for only about twenty five hundred, so 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 super low print uh, for a modern uh, first appearance, and and a book that's only going to get bigger and bigger. Right, uh, America Chavez is showing up in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, that's been confirmed. Uh, it's almost impossible to believe that's the last time we see her. Uh, she's likely to be a huge character for the MCU going forward. In this book, should only get hotter and hotter. Amen. Man, my buddy's got a 9 8 newsstand of this book. Man, I hate it. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. There is a newsstand, which is mind numbing given the low print run. Um, yeah, if you ever find the newsstand of this book, grab it, whatever the price. <laughs> and, yeah. In how, behalf, much, is, how much does your buddy want for it? I, yeah. I told him don't take anything less than 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, I yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. Yeah. You know. So, so this book just we don't talk about it much, but there are other first appearances in this. Um, there are first appearances who haven't, you know, characters who have not really shown up beyond this series, but there was a whole team of new characters um, you know, from this kind of alternate universe, basically. Um, ultra, ul, ultimate nullifier. I just pulled up the list just so I don't misspeak at all. Ultimate nullifier is the first appearance here. Um, there's an there's a few characters that did show up other places that that made this new team called the Teen Brigade. And I don't know the the uh, the origin of America Chavez is a little bit convoluted. I remember we were talking about this in Drunken Chat a few months ago. I don't know if you were there, Aaron, but um, yeah. Lucas is not a fan of the character just because of <laughs> the, the the screwed up origin. She's an alien who... Oh, it's Puerto Rican. You're retconning it right now in her own new solo series, right? 
issue yeah, four yeah. came out this week, I think, and they're kind of kind of cleaning it up a little bit. So right, and that's that's kind of what I assume is going to happen, even more so as we get closer to the MCU. She's just it's going to be a Puerto Rican character who, you know, who fixes bikes and you know, and can punch holes to reality. Um, but no, I I love this book. I love this cover. And yeah, this is that those there were those glossy covers. They're so easy to get spine ticks on these. Not a high quality paper. Shitty paper. But but the paper glossy. on these, yeah, the paper on these gets the shit kicked out of it for some reason. Yeah, but I love the character. I I, I do view her as you know a future face of the MCU, a future face of like a like the modern version of Captain America, a modern version of patriotism. Um, yeah, I love it. And she is Miss America. She's taken on the mantle of her from the Golden Age. So people yeah. forget about that. She is mm. an iconic character, you know? Absolutely. All right. So next we have all new Marvel Now point one number one. Um, this is the first full appearance of Kamala Khan. Um, as Ms. Marvel. Um, you know, this book has about 1,500 copies on the census, sold at uh, about $1,700 uh, in mid-June uh, in 9.8. Um, you know, there's, there's some confusion about what Kamala Khan's first appearance is. And, you know, I've talked about this a lot, but without question, this is really the book. Um, there was Captain Marvel 14, and there was a picture of her on one panel that they had to go back and clarify that was her, right? Her name's not mentioned. It was just a face, effectively. Um, and then in issue number 17, which get, gets muddied with a second print, uh, but, but but her face is never shown. It's just basically her in a T-shirt from the neck down um, and the waist up, uh, kind of flexing. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's a cameo by every definition, um, that book got elevated because there was a second print of her in her costume. Um, but by all ob objective measures, this is her first full appearance, without question, and uh, and, and a must-have book. Uh, these books get the shit kicked out of them from the paper. I don't know why. I've never seen a book pick up spine ticks like this particular book for some reason. It's really, really hard to keep in high grade. If you If you look it up on the census, I believe... There are more nine sixes than nine eights. You don't usually see that for modern books, um, uh, but a super important book for a character who's getting her own show later this year. I expect to see this book to hit prices that are going to be mind numbing. To be perfectly honest with you, and there is a second print, which is not the point of this presentation, but that one is super, super, super tough to find unless you're Joe, who's got like a stack. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know, when they printed this book, you know, one thing you'll notice is the book is very heavy and the staples are very thin. So, it, I mean, it's just a problem waiting to happen. And then the binary issues on the top and the bottom corners uh, where the white pops out and yeah. uh, it, 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 they're just a pain in the ass to uh, to find without those issues. I mean... It, it's a tough book to to get in a nine eight. That's for sure. Yeah, it's super. Is it, what what Loki was that grabbing Kamala Khan? Which Loki is that? I mean, it looks like a female Loki, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Is I that wanted, the first appearance? To point that out. So is that the first appearance? <laughs> oh man! Oh my <laughs> god! It kind of looks like no. the kid Loki, though, right? The actor, the kid Loki. Yeah. Does was, that predate the journey into mystery, Kid Loki? I was thinking about that last week when I was looking at it. I'm like, that's Loki. We but need I, to do some research on this. No, bro. no, no. <laughs> that's another presentation down the rabbit hole. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm so done with Loki variants. Yeah. <laughs> and hasn't, hasn't this book basically quadrupled in the last 12 months? I, oh, I want to yeah. say there were five, $600 copies. A year ago. Yeah. That's right, Tony. That's absolutely right. The, the, this is the next hammer, hammer to drop, dude. Like, yeah. the minute you see a trailer, oh, my goodness, dude. 
Yeah, this thing the first show is coming out this year, right? I mean, yeah. if I'm mistaken, uh, it's Hawkeye and this on the back end of this year. I mean, Kamala is going to go fucking nuts. Like, this book is only going to get hotter. And, yeah. and for her to be on those two platforms of television and movies where she's going to cross over, I mean, she's going to be around for a while, yeah. man. No, that's a really yeah. good point because we, we're seeing a lot of new stuff show up. I mean, we're seeing a lot of the the MCU characters, you know, whatever Hawkeye and 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 Falcon and Winter Soldier get their get their time, but we're seeing new characters pop up in Disney Plus shows. But to see one of them basically to be, I mean, she's it's called the Marvels. I mean, she's the name character or or one of the the couple name characters of that movie. That's a big that's a big commitment by by Disney. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think a, I think a lot of people have been hesitating on, you know, uh, believing that buying Kamala Khan keys and variants are going to be profitable for them, and they have to actually really see her on on camera, right? So we'll get our teaser, we'll get the trailer, and then we'll just we'll just see the audience reaction. I think it's going to be the book has gone up a lot, but there I I foresee a delayed spec for a high ceiling for for all of her firsts and uh variants cameos and all that so if she comes out you know it always talked about likability right so nobody really cared about sherry but then when the actress uh who portrayed her on uh black panther she she was electrifying i mean she did such a great job in that movie. It kind of it felt like Q from the James Bond movies, man, where she was had all the was inventing all this tech and very likable. And then everybody wanted Shuri books. If yeah. she if she has that same kind of uh, likability, you know, uh, man, the the sky's the limit. You just look at Black Widow and and that girl's performance it makes yeah. me want to go out and get her first appearance man yeah i mean i think i think yeah miss marvel or kamala she's she's very likable if you read her books i mean no i'm saying the actress oh the, the actress. actress oh the yeah. actress because that's well, what I, you're waiting on you yeah know? but she's how, how young is she she's like she looks like she's 16 or 17 years old okay and, yeah, you know, right. no she's, she's an yeah, adult she, She's an she's adult. Eighteen, yeah, at least uh, eighteen, yeah. Really? Okay. Uh huh. Well, she still has. I mean, how long is her contract? She's or, gonna be around for ten years, man. Like, yeah. oh no, yeah, no, she's gonna. No. She, yeah, she's gonna grow okay. into. Yeah, I mean, she's a newly discovered actress. Like, yeah. Where, yeah. Like, I don't think. Like, I think she's had like some minor roles here and there, but nothing like really notable, right? Yeah. And so yeah. this is sort of, like her first big role, and you know. People like will wait a lifetime for that to happen, but you know she's getting it in now, and you know what better place than the MCU? Yeah, I mean she's going to get TV shows and feature films. Like it's she's going to be a big, big character for the next 10, 12 years for Marvel. So you know yeah. what? I, I I hate to get into it too much, but along with her rise in, in popularity in in exposure. Uh, there is there's an undercurrent, and without naming any websites or, or individuals, but there's an undercurrent that that pushes back so hard against what they view as as you know having having things shoved down their throat and whatever woke culture or whatever. I mean, do you remember when Black Panther one came out? Do you remember the 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 online uh, there was a huge effort to get the tomato, Rotten Tomatoes score annihilated, and that was a, that was an awesome movie. You know, yeah. there was I mean, that's there, the minority tone. I mean, I hear you, and like it, it, it like, is. That, I'm just. I hope that I hope it stays. Them. I hope it stays out of the news stories, because you know this this is a big deal. This is we're talking about the first Muslim American character to to have a, a starring role. Uh, and I, I, I want it to do well so badly, you know. I just kept the pushbacks is still happening on Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. so yeah. I mean, Captain mm -hmm. Marvel, I mean, there, there were you know, pe people are, are hard in that movie for a long the wrong reasons, but it wasn't a perfect movie either. But no, 
I hear you. I, I, yeah. I hear you. Kamala Khan, right? She was, this book was supposed to fail right out of the gate, right? right. Given, given, given sort of the, the demographic, if you will. And it succeeded against all odds. And I, and I really think the character and the show will continue to do that because it's not cramming down some kind of a culture that you're not comfortable with. It's really just a kid growing up with her own problems, right? And I think that resonates. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Ben. I think that resonates. So, yeah. Um, anyways, I'm excited for the show. Super excited for the show. Not quite as much as Hawkeye, but but. Uh, what course, you're yeah. not ready for Hawkeye? No, no, Hawkeye, I, I am. That's like. Oh, oh okay. Movie. No, no, no <laughs> by far, um, by far, I love Hawkeye. Man, I after can't... what I after what I watched tonight, oh man, yeah, I'm man, excited. I can't wait for Hawkeye. And, oh and, man, <laughs> you know, that's the show I've been dreaming for. Dreaming. Yeah. But this I, is I, a close second. This is I, a, her show's a close second. But yeah. man, you're starting to feel the girl power coming out, man. All Yelena Belova and then uh uh Haley St- uh is it um Steinfeld Steinfeld and then now Kamala Khan and then Miss America. I mean, the girls are going to start coming, man. Yeah, they're taking you over, know, man. They're taking it's over. Yeah. You see it, you see it. Like this one right here. I mean, everybody in the beginning had their doubts and they've been talking about all their trash, but then look how much these books are going for. People are spending money. Uh, and, you know, right. money talks. Oh, There's, yeah. You know? A serious question. So, at all said and done, Miss Marvel or Jubilee, who's going to be the queen of bubblegum? Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Jubilee, man. Listen, yeah. I, 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 nobody knows more about gum, bubblegum than me. And Jubilee, man, she's got the most covers. So, uh, Kamala's got two, as far as I know. Jubilee's got like 22. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. got to be Jubilee. I bet they break out the bubble gum in episode one, though. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Ben will pass out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let, let's, awesome. get, let's get the show on the road. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're talking about Kate Bishop. Here we go. Young Avengers number one, okay. uh, cover A. Um, the last sale was uh, just over $1,000 back in June, uh, 2500 plus on the census. Listen, this book has crazy, crazy upside. Um, it feels like Marvel's going to do some version of the Young Avengers. I don't think it's going to be this version, in my opinion, explicitly. But Hulkling, um, Wiccan, Speed, Patriot, we've already seen teases of these characters, right, from the Disney Plus shows. So uh, this book can only get bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh huge huge upside there's a couple of other, other ways to play this book but cover a you can't go wrong and uh in a real smart play i think and in, in a book that's only gonna get hotter and hotter so i've i've heard from other content creators that um this is like the giant size x-men one of our time like would anyone on this panel kind of agree with that statement or yeah i mean you know, i i agree with bigger, it I, maybe bigger I, I think that a lot of these these the all these um books that we mentioned on the bangers i actually think they're going to be iconic and, and they're all going to be future grails um they're going to be going for they're going to be compared to all the grails that we're chasing right now you know all the copper bronze um golden age so yeah i don't see why not Totally agree, Aaron. I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, and maybe bigger in some cases, just given that we're probably going to see, you know, these characters on the screen for a long, long time, right? So, I mean, that's going to cement them in, in popular culture. And that's because, you know, this book doesn't have stature in it, and she comes out in, what, number six? You know, uh, so, I mean, the Young Avengers are going to be they may not call them young Avengers, but I mean, you're going to see all these characters at least make some kind of an appearance in shows or movies. Oh. I mean, I mean, I, th- I think the difference between, um, you know, the young Avengers and how they're presented right now is that we have, we have, um, 
different platforms to share this information. You know, these characters, you know, they're out, you know, on screen already. Where opposed when we were collecting comics, uh, when I was copying, uh, collecting comics in the 90s, the, the, the only uh, media was just through reading a book. Now, now kids nowadays, they have the internet, they can go to an LCS, they can, they can, they can find it on a t-shirt and um, just the, you know, the information age is so fast now. So I think that, you know, what we're seeing right now, you know, as an, as adults, you know, um, these kids have, are going to see it as, um, what am I trying to get at? Um, I think that they're just going to, I'm sorry, I messed up. No, man. It's, 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 these characters yeah. are going to be defining for them, right? They're going to be yeah. cornerstone, important characters, right? There's no, there's no question about that. And I think, and I think Disney is deliberately setting up this team uh, very thoughtfully, and it's going to be an expanded version of this, something between sort of Young Avengers one and, and Young Avengers one volume two, probably, um, with America and other characters in it. But th this book set the stage for that. And it's going to be super, super important going forward, I think. Well, yeah. they've they introduced so many characters very quickly, you know, as far as Wiccan and Speed. And then um, uh, who who else? Uh, Kate Bishop. Uh, I mean, she's not yeah, on the cover yeah. here, but right. she's definitely her first appearance. Right. Oh, yeah. She's going to be a major character. And, and, and that Hawkeye show is going to be a freaking hit. I know. It's going, to be it's hit. going to be Disney's biggest hit. <laughs> and maybe that's the fanboy me talking, but I think it's going to be their biggest hit, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, after after that Black Widow, oh man, you I, see Yelena Belova and and uh, Haley Haley uh, Steinfeld going at it, man. I mean, oh my gosh, my my, the, my, whole, my. the whole theater was like, ooh, yeah. I was like, oh man, Disney. That was the best after <laughs> scene. For Marvel in a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, it was well worth the wait. I don't want to. Yeah. I just spoiled spoiler. it for everybody. That no, I'm, 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 I'm just glad I got to see it in IMAX, dude. I thought I was going to yeah. be dead last year. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think too. This book is going to take like steps up. Like right now, Kate Bishop is the big name out of this book. She's got her show coming up. Uh, everybody's excited. Everybody's been on Kate Bishop now for over a year, even before she was announced. You know, to have her own series, she was the name coming out of this series. A year ago, people, Patriot, eh, you know. But we have a Patriot in the MCU. We have an actor. All we need is a second season or, or a new Captain America show or a Falcon Captain America show, whatever, uh, to develop that character. And then there's another bump up. Uh, Wick, it seems like Wiccan, uh, you know, and, and Speed might be a little bit farther off based on the... Uh, but when there'll be a bump up there at some point, Hulkling will will should show up. It seems a little far off now, but just every 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 one of those introductions just is going to ramp it up more than it is already. I, I just have a funny feeling by next year this is going to be a two thousand dollar book. Yeah, I mean it's not too far off now. I mean this is this eleven hundred. I don't think was the high, but it's. It's flirting with about two thousand yeah. dollars number already. I mean, all right. Next, we've got uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars number one cover A. This is mind blowing, man. The, the, this book is almost a four thousand <laughs> dollar book in nine point eight. That's the price you probably have to pay to get it today, um, with seven hundred and thirty on the census. Um, you know, there is a variant of this, which is reached another level in and of itself. But, uh, um, you know, you know, th this book is only get hotter as, as, as Star Wars continues to get more content on Disney and Disney plus, yeah. um, um, Star Wars, man. Possible? I mean, I, I, that's a, that's such a large number. And out of all the Star Wars fans out there, the vast majority of them hadn't heard of Ahsoka until about seven months ago. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. Well, so a lot of Star Wars fans uh, if remember you were Clone the Wars, Clone Wars, Wars exactly, you know? Yeah. If you were a Clone Wars guy, you know exactly 
but I, I I guess I'm throwing in that casual Star Wars fans as well. As oh, well. okay. You don't follow all the animated and and everything. There's no such thing as a casual Star Wars fan. <laughs> <laughs> you're in it or you're not. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, what else on this? Like, you know, besides the animated stuff, like we also have, um, you also have Captain Rex's first appearance in this. And oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, as we get closer to the Ahsoka series, which, you know, we kind of got the a feel for what it's going to be like in Mandalorian for that one episode that Ahsoka was in there. So I feel like, you know, it's just going to keep on building off of that. Yeah, I'm not even a Star yeah. Wars guy. Like a hard guy, I enjoy it and I watch it. I don't spec on it too much. But that episode from Mandalorian yeah. with her in it was just so badass. I mean, Hell she yeah. was yeah. so so good in that. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. She was made to play Ahsoka. Yeah, you know. And then they name dropped Thrawn, and then just all hell broke loose, man. You know. So I don't think we've even seen. I don't be shocked. This book will probably be five grand by next year. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. in nine eights, there's only seven hundred and thirty of them, man. You know, well, I mean, that's I crazy. Think, I think that's just a total CGC census. Yeah, yeah. total. Yeah, that's not even nine eights. That's everything, right? Everything. Yeah. Census, so <laughs> how many Star Wars fans are out there? Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's bigger, man. The more it's on Disney Plus, the bigger the fan base is going to get, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, we haven't seen anything yet when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. But you think, like, you can go back to the first a 1979 issue of the first Marvel series in the first 10 issues. If you can, you can get some of those 9.8s for, you know, maybe not a big key first appearance, but you can get one of those for three, four, five hundred bucks. Just to think that that a book that came out a couple of years ago, four thousand dollars is crazy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> is a hell of a lot smaller, right? Which yeah. Was, um, yeah. Um, you know, it this was a, a name drop by Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars when he was talking to Luke and talking about him and his father fighting in the Clone Wars. And it was just a throw out line. And and look where we are now. I mean, it's it's unreal. That's what Star Wars does. Same thing with Rogue One. You know, it's just uh, you know, from the opening scroll of 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 a movie where they talked about spies stealing uh, uh, the plans to the Death Star. You know, and they made a movie of it. They made a movie based off of a couple of throwout lines and a couple of sentences. You know, and. That's how strong Star Wars is, the lore, the backstory. I mean, that's that's what Star Wars does. I mean, I mean, we all shouldn't be shocked at at some of these price. I mean, it's Clone Wars number one. I mean, with only 730 copies, there could be a lot of I mean, maybe half of that is CBCS, you know, but their their registry isn't when did now, they this, start? This is CGC, I believe. So this yeah. census numbers is just CGC what I pulled, but um, yeah, let's keep going because I believe there's another Star Wars book on the list uh, yep. next, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Darth Vader number three, uh, cover A. Mm. Uh, so the last 9.8 sale in this is uh, just under 500 back in uh, early June with almost 4,000 on the census. Um, uh, you know, listen, a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans are really uh, speculating um, on this book. There, There is uh, a 1 in 25 that commands a super high premium, uh, but Dr. Aphra um, is is likely to be an important character going forward, and, uh, and i got to be honest. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Go, Joe. Only you only, you only two? You have like seven. I know. Oh. I, I'm like, why are you showing two? I didn't want to show my nine six. I was kind of pissed <laughs> off about that. I, I will say this: this cover is much better than the one in twenty five, in my humble opinion. Uh, this is Granov uh, who did it. Uh, he is he is a master. Uh, and there are several late printings in this book that get harder and harder to find as they go on. Um, uh, but a brilliant, brilliant. Uh, 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 cover and comic uh, that's likely to grow in popularity over time. 
Yeah, this it's, character is gonna yeah. like bring in um like talk about a character that can bring everyone together. She is gender fluid, right? And she's a minority. She's a fun character, archaeologist, Indiana Jones, like yeah. she just checks so many boxes and those murder bots, bro. Oh so, man. Dude. man <laughs> you know, uh they could just take their time. This book doesn't need any spec. Um, even though investors like us they want they want this character to show up so we can get an instant <laughs> ROI, right? But it doesn't need any spec. Just it could I be know. ten years from now. You know, yeah. this book will keep going up steadily. So I'm sorry I was interrupting someone, but did Joe Joe, did you have a point or something? Or no, I was gonna agree with you. I mean this thing is it just has so much room to grow. Oh, like yeah, you, you, you can right. buy for five hundred and I'm I'm happy. I'm happy for the yeah. rest like ten years on out. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I like this book better than that variant. Now that variant, it's it's cool. I mean, but man, I I just I, I love Adi Granoff art, man. He's the just, artist is just stunning. It's yeah. yeah. The the Darth Vader in the background is freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love both covers. To be completely honest, so I mean, I bought it in like way early, and um, uh. The cool thing about this was when I met Audie to sign my copy, um, he wears a, uh, what is it? The, uh, the, uh, commander hats from, uh, from, from the empire and stuff like oh, that. Oh, get out of here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Not even joking. Like he, he wears that like proudly, you know, he, he's great to meet. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he'll sign your book and then like he'll do, do commissions. Like people wait in line, like the entire commission. Like just to get a commission from him and stuff like that. Nice. So, uh, yeah. I know this list isn't about you know uh, showing books that are at a good price, but honestly, I I think that's that's it's cheap price. Yeah, it's uh, cheap, man. You know, Great it's book. Not the, it's not the smallest print run. You know, and they did a lot of late printings. If you're comparing it to the last one we talked about, the Clone Wars, you know, seven hundred on the census versus three thousand seven hundred. Um, but but still. Uh, I think that's a good price, and I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat something, and you all can make fun of me when it turns out not to be true. But if it does turn out to be true, I'm gonna feel really good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little, almost a year ago, I was I was speculating with some friends on uh, Simple Man's Patreon. We were fan casting, and I fan casted uh, Maya Erskine as Doctor Afra. I'm like, oh, she'd be perfect. She's so funny. She's on that Pen Fifteen show where she. She and that other girl, they pretend to be middle schoolers. And it's its a really amusing show. She's a funny actor. And then she got cast for Obi-Wan. And nobody was really saying Dr. Aphra. And I know with the hardcore Star Wars canon people, it doesn't quite line up. The years are off just a little bit. Um, but I'm just saying, Maya Erskine, uh, we, might, we might see a little I hope you're movie. right, Tony. That would be awesome, man. We will give you all the credit <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Bow down, right? right? <laughs> Not worthy. <laughs> yeah, right. and the, the actress that plays Fennec Shand is quite older too, you know. So and and Asian, so it's possible. I mean, there might be like a ten year gap, you know. But uh, I've watched that Pen Fifteen show, man, and I mean, she's hilarious, man. So it's so funny. I, I could see it happening, man. I could see it. She's just, she's got that kind of charisma, if that makes sense. Like for these starring roles, I think it's the same with Disney and, and Kevin Feige. They really, if it could be a famous person or a not famous person, but they really go after the actors and actresses who just have that charisma. You know what I mean? Just are able to light up the screen. Uh, yeah. I think she has that. So I'm hoping it's her. If it could be easily be somebody else, I just I want to see it on screen at some point in time. Yeah, it seems like she would have that actress is very believable for having a penchant of getting in trouble. So I totally agree with you, bro. <laughs> well put, so well put. All right, what do we got next? All right, another Star Wars book. Tony, I think this is your book actually on the list here. Knights of the Old Republic number nine. Well, what do you got on this one? I'm in Star Wars Heaven, man. So yeah, no, this is this is uh my, my good friend Darth Revan. Uh I I'm not I 
I collect a lot more Star Wars than I used to, um, but I, I'm probably still more kind of on your side, Ben. I don't. I am not. I don't know the Star Wars lore. I've been a fan of Star Wars forever, but I I was not deep into all the Dark Horse books and deep into all the animated shows. However, I can, I can recognize a important character when I see one, and Darth Revan, the story arc that that character has played, being uh, being a Jedi switching sides to the Sith, switching back and being a character that the Jedi and the Sith have to actually team up to defeat. I just, I, I'm just saying that I want to see it in a movie. Like the character is so intriguing. Uh, it's one of those comic wise. It's a tricky character. It's a little bit like Kamala Khan. Like we said earlier, there are going back to Knights of the old Republic issue number zero. There are about four secret little cameos of Revan. Uh, before we get to this number nine, um, they aren't really collected yet. Uh, Zero is a little bit collected. He shows up just in one frame of a couple other, uh, or one panel of a couple other comics. But this is this is the one to get right now. I know there was a big Tales of the Flip Side uh, panel about a year ago about that this shouldn't be the the book to get. It should be uh, forty two. Or is it 48? 42. Like, Knights 42. of the... I think I think uh, Joe has a copy. Yeah, and 42 has become a big book now, too. 42 is pushing 800 in, in a 9.8. But this, uh, you know, this is top 1,200, 1,400, uh, 1,600 in a 9.8. Yes, beautiful book. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So the intricacies of... I know the early ones are cameos. You know, some people call this number nine more of a cameo than that. I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. The market has chosen this one. Um, love the character. Want to see it on screen. And fingers crossed that this might hopefully be the property that Kevin Feige and Mike Waldron are working on for Star Wars. That would be amazing. Yeah, so this book. Yeah, you can argue is the first Revan. He's in the shadows. You don't see his face, okay? He has dialogue. He has multiple panels. Early on, this was anointed as the book. Then I think the author, John Jackson Miller, he went on air with CBSI and said, no, well, he actually first appears in Knights of the Old Republic flip book number zero, where he's, a, where he's just there in a crowd okay and he says yeah that's that's revan then in 42 yeah that's where he raises his helmet and announces he's revan which is just it's my favorite full circle man <laughs> you know i mean that's i mean if you're just a just if you just like reading comics and you like star wars lore like just read that book you know read it online somewhere and it it gets it tugs on your strings I'm like man this is awesome and and then you also have the video game spec aspect of this too where Revan yeah. was a, a hugely lovable character for gamers then he also showed up in uh I think maybe he's in his second or third black series figure I right. I'm sure Tony has a couple figs and lightsaber somewhere you know <laughs> of Revan <laughs> I might you know another guy that uh, some of you know but Adam from Strange Tales to collect uh, he named his son Revan. So I, I'm not wow. the biggest Revan fan. But uh, no, there's a there's a cult following out there. And, and yeah, I, having so much of the lore in video games, like you said, I think that's awesome. I think that's, and we're starting to see that where they're pulling characters and 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 droids or whatever it is from that we saw in The Mandalorian that had their roots in various video games over the years. Perfect. There's so much lore there. You know this cover is is phenomenal from his his lightsaber hilt to his robe and you know no reference to go off of this is so unique uh the design on the robe is it, just uh, uh phenomenal brilliant yeah yep cool cover for sure all right next on the list is 
Batgirl number 12. Oof. I'll tell you what. I tell you what. I, I don't I don't collect a ton of DC. I will say that this book could be my top five modern favorite covers uh, by Art Germ. This is just brilliant. Uh, this is frankly just a cover by, um, from my perspective, maybe there's something in the guts that I'm missing, um, but but a beautiful, beautiful book um, that, uh, that I have in my collection and I think most modern collectors should want in their collection. But uh, goes, oh, yeah, there we go. Mama! There we go. Uh, yeah, it sells for just over two hundred dollars and nine eight, which is not crazy from a price perspective. There's uh, just under five hundred on the census, uh, but a beautiful book uh, that I don't think many people can argue against. I've got the European version. I love that book so much. It's a big fat uh, panini. Um, yeah, this is book Italian. Italian. It's Italian. Yeah, our drum is homaging his own work, but this has been sort of redone at this point. But uh, uh, there's something about this book that's just perfect, in my opinion. So um, an important DC modern modern banger, as we would say. Steve would be proud. <laughs> Where is he tonight? <laughs> These DC books are for him. All right. Uh, yeah, he he made it to the spec ten, but it's not, it sounded like he had something else to do, like afterwards. So oh, okay, he, okay. He couldn't make it tonight. Never the same without him. Never the same without him. Right. Next is another DC, another DC book, if I'm not mistaken. We've talked about this book in the past on Bangers. Um, this is the Jock Cabaret. You know, there's almost 2,000 of these on the census, and this thing still sells for 798 which is mind-blowing. Um, it, it, it is one of the modern sort of Joker covers that just sort of speaks like iconic. And uh, uh, a tough book to get, and uh, and only growing in popularity it seems. Uh, another book that's really effectively just a cover buy, um, but a super important uh, book, uh, no matter which way you slice it. Oh yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite job covers of all times, and uh, you know it it it's towards the end of the uh, the Black Mirror story arc that uh, Scott. Scott Snyder was working on for Detective Comics, and uh, this is like right before the uh, the changeover to New Fifty Two, also. Uh, and then after New Fifty Two, you know, they pick back up the legacy numbers of of Detective Comics and all that. So, you know, um, definitely a tough book to get in that nine eight. Um, you know, we've seen tons of our friends. I, I think even like you know the CEO. He submitted a raw one and still only hit that nine six. But yeah, um, just something about that cover that you know prevents you from getting that nine eight. I'm actually surprised that it's only seven hundred. It, it's become such. I mean, this was a spec book. You know, this isn't just from the last year and a half of COVID. I mean, this has been a big book for quite a long time. You can find this image on coffee mugs and. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I mean, this this was May. I mean, so when I pulled these numbers, what I what I found was seven hundred nine eight. And that was May first, right? So it could it could have doubled by now, to be honest with you, in the current environment. So no, you know, and we talked about it on Bangers, man. This is this covers what gave Heath Ledger the inspiration to to do that makeup with the blood and have the scar right there on the ends yeah. of his. You know, you want to know how I got these scars, you know, yeah. kind of uh, kind of thing. And he had his little journal notebook with this picture in there. I mean, you can see that online. Um, it's his famous um, where he locked himself up in a hotel room and just kind of just worked out a character, you know, and just how how this guy was going to be, how crazy he was going to be. That's cool. Yeah, great book, great book. All right, next we've got Teen Titans Go number 23. All right, this is a tricky book. So this this is the first appearance of Red X. Um, uh, this is cover A. Um, this book wasn't highly printed. Uh, there, Last I checked, there were only 17 on the census. Uh, Nine Eights sold at $1,500. Uh, Red X has become – I wish Steve was here because this is really sort of his – 
powerhouse power zone um but uh, red x is a character that uh is is uh has almost a mythology within dc now we're starting to see a new character being introduced um within sort of the main street dc dc comics um but this is where we see the character for the first time um and uh a book that's really kind of hard to come by in high grade because it was a kid's book wasn't highly printed and uh and really tough to come by i've hunted this book for a long time and never found one um, and uh, one I'd really like to have to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, this, um, I, I think it got a lot of heat like right away. As soon as people started paying attention to it, the prices went crazy. I think people had that the image of the, the first Harley being in a kid's book, you know, and and Good a, lot of those, Good a lot of those issues get beat up and they, they're, they're in the long boxes that people don't respect or they get torn up or thrown away. I will say this is the first appearance of Red X. However, if you read this issue, Red X in this comic is actually a robot. That's correct. A bunch That's of robots. So it's the first appearance of that, you know, the cowl and cape and everything. And maybe in the long run, that might be the most important thing. Maybe we'll end up getting four different Red Xs. You know, maybe it's just the, the, the mythos of it that's the most important but um so as a character as a as a as a hero or anti-hero uh his first appearance would actually be from this future state stuff um but even as a teen titans go character just from the cartoons and i mean he had funko pops you know before anybody else any of us yeah, yeah. i mean if, if you follow sort of the harley playbook right i mean her first appearance is not in continuity either so right so is this i mean this book is probably following that this is the introduction of the concept or the spirit of the character um and i, and I think given the fact that it is really difficult in high grade um it just adds to sort of the appeal of this book but uh yeah it's a super cool one i'm not a huge dc guy but a book i really really would like to have in my PC. Okay, uh, next we've got. So I've never heard of this book before. Uh, <laughs> What's the no, spec? So, uh, so something that kill, something that's killing the children. Number one, um, you know, this book is selling, and this was back in June. This book has probably got to be going for more than a grand now in nine point eight. Uh, there's about thirteen hundred on the census. It was just officially optioned by Netflix this week. Um, it's an absolute monster indie series. I mean, the last time we saw anything like this was probably Saga. Um, and before that, Walking Dead. Um, but uh, yeah, a hugely popular series. And if this is executed well on Netflix, I think the sky's the limits. Absolutely sky's the limits for this. Um, there's a big question mark right now of, of you know how well they're able to pull that off but even if it isn't the series in and of itself is fundamentally really really good right just the comic itself is really really good and uh you know the series could fail um but i think this book holds up for a while james tinian probably the best writer uh um in in the game right now for my money and uh you know a brilliant brilliant series you know, if they wait too long, kind of like with uh, Jupiter's Legacy, they waited and waited and waited. Uh, they're going to miss their window. I mean, you hope that this gets done within the next six months with the series still going on in, in the comics, much like The Walking Dead. You know, um, that was the perfect storm. They had they had the comics going. They had the show going. They had action figures and toys and statues. And I mean, that's the perfect way to do it. If you're going to, uh, you know, catch this lightning in a bottle, you know, so to speak with all media mediums, medias, you know, does that make sense? No, I agree. I, I think, and I think there is some urgency. It feels like around, um, getting this project live. Um, I have no I, inside sources by any means, but, just when I've read, it seems like there is some urgency to get this series series going. So I think it could be an absolutely huge hit. 
even if it isn't, the book is the book stands on its own. Like sure. the fact that it's optioned honestly has very little to do right now with the appeal of this title for me. It's just really well written and, and really well done. Yeah. yeah, I feel I feel like this is a like the next Walking Dead number one, and it's hitting its stride to get to three thousand dollars and nine eight, and it's a horror genre. But reading the comic series, I feel like this has a Umbrella Academy type of vibe. Very very now lingo's, you know, a little rough around the edges. It's a fun fun read. Um, I think Aaron has some f thoughts about it being on Netflix. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? I mean, I mean you know, um, to me, it's a bit scary to see that, like, oh, it's going to be on Netflix. Uh, you know, I will, I will say, you know, as a lot of people know, this is my favorite series. Um, but, you know, with the history of what Netflix has done, it's, you know, it's, it launches off a series one season and it's kind of done or even like even if it does get multiple seasons i feel like it's not going to sustain the prices of of books in this uh just my opinion of, of seeing like the history of it um however i will say you know i am part of a, a lot of facebook groups and stuff like that and the people they've been throwing out to say like hey this could be the actress for for Erica Slaughter, I was like, oh, that's a really good pick. And the one they picked was the actress from um, New Mutants and uh, Queen's Gambit. Uh, uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name off the top yeah, of my head. They, it, 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 is that confirmed? On your... No, no, no. It's just, just it's, you know, it's just fan picks. Man, it, uh, it's, like, that'd be a good pick, yeah. Man, if they yeah, lock her the down. Huh? Anya? Uh, yeah, Anya. Yeah. You've got three names. Anya Taylor's, I don't know, something like that. The, Anya yeah, yeah. Taylor-Joy. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah, so I mean, you know, honestly, like, if they went that route, like, I would be super excited again to see, you know, something that's killing the children on Netflix. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to wait, I guess, for casting announcements to happen. I mean, you know, they, they just started writing, or the, the writers got announced of who's going to be doing the series. So, yeah, so... I guess uh kind of like on the fence on seeing like what happens. But. So one thing Netflix has a lot of money. So, you know, I don't think they would pick up this property if they weren't willing to to put that money into it, you know. And hopefully uh, James Tynion is going to be a consultant and and have a lot to do with it. Hopefully he's not you know pushed into the other room while they're you know changing things or you know hopefully they stay true to the story. Yeah. yeah. One thing I, I I think Aaron, I kind of agree with you on a lot of that. And Joe, you're right. They do have a lot of money, but in a way, having too much money might go against it because as they showed with, I mean, they purchased Millerverse, Mark Millar, and the very yeah. first show he comes out with, they jettison after the first season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got pretty decent reviews. They can they can drop two hundred million on a property. And then if they if somebody doesn't like it, they can just throw it away. So it it's you know they they don't have to hang their hat on any one or two or three shows. They can afford to take losses if they need to. And but I hope it's good. I hope the casting is great. I hope it does awesome. But yeah, I think it is kind of priced for ultimate success right now. I would say this. I, I think the genre appeals more to more than just the comic book genre. I watched Jupiter's Legacy and I enjoyed it, but it seemed to be geared towards a very sort of certain audience, whereas I think this has more broad appeal like Walking Dead did, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, right? I agree. There, there are more people. This is not a comic book. Yeah. when they and see for years, movie. like horror has been like super. Right. Right, so I, I I think I think that it's got that going for it, in my opinion. But we'll see, we'll see how they execute. That yeah. it comes down to what how they execute it. But you could uh, play off the it Stranger Things kind of vibe, you know, the pop culture. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Hmm. So uh, listen, this book is not a mystery to anybody. Uh, Invincible number one, uh, cover A, not to be confused with. 
the Larry's comics, uh, number one. Uh, you know, this book is going, you know, this is 4,000. When I put this together, I believe this has hit 7,000 in 9.8, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, within the last week or so. Uh, just over 1,200 on the census. The animated series has been great. Uh, there's more There's more seasons coming. Um, you know, maybe we see this in live action at some point, but a massive, massive modern book by any standard and only getting bigger. Yeah, I, I've definitely enjoyed what Amazon's been doing with their content. You know, you know they haven't been taking the safe routes about anything. Uh, it's definitely, you know, meant for, like anything they put out on Amazon is definitely meant for adults. Uh, you know, we've seen the boys, we've seen the first season of Invincible. Like, you know, that's all, they're not afraid to show blood or adult themes. God, you know, they nailed it, man. You know, just, I, I didn't, I was skeptical and I sat through the, the first two episodes and I was like, holy crap, man, this is good. And, you know, I passed up on this book several times and now Jesus Christ, yeah. I'm going to have to get a loan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go to a bank. Hey, uh, can we take know. out a mortgage on my house so I can reinvest yeah. it into a comic book? I need to get Invincible number one. Hopefully, the bank of the guy at the bank goes, Oh, yeah, I saw that. I'm gonna give you the loan. So he's he's gonna tell you to sell one of your uh, your all new Marvel point one. Oh, no way, baby. No go way. Buy it with that. Maybe go to Baltimore, work a trade. I don't know. I'm, I'm with you, though, Joe. There's a special kind of pain you feel when you've been specifically avoiding buying a book for an extended period of time and then to have it become big and so big. And just, the, yeah, I, I did not get into this book in time man, at all. Man, mm. Kirk, Kirkman's got a couple of bangers in his, his uh, profile, man, that are just unbelievable. Walking Dead 1 and now in, Invincible 1. Oh, man, bangers list at some point, right? Yeah, no <laughs> kidding, man. And what's the, what's the next one that he's going to have up his he, sleeve? Yes, he, he has firepower. Yeah, you know, you never know. All right, so this is the list tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are going to do more of these bangers lists. Um, uh, we're going to do another no variant list um, at some point in the future, but. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we'll have another one coming uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Um, uh, we appreciate the comments, and let us know what you want to see. If you've got any ideas, drop them, and we will include them in future episodes. But uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll, we'll catch you on the flip side.